Voy a tener que remocarlo. El seguro me lo remueca. Sí. Pero no, no. Yo también te iba a decir eso, que me lo habían dicho, que no me pusiera a andar en eso. No, me dicen que si, you know, que if you know what you're doing. Déjame, voy a coger una clase. Yes.
kuli bikeri halat kiai ya kira muhi kuli birahi wa kiri sai kalas tikai hablis tikama kinil malama hablu karama bizi liwai. Bidil Jamali, Bidil Kamali, Bidil Imali, Bidil Dawai, Bidil Ibada, Bidil Ifada, Bidil Ifada, Lil Oliyai, Bidil Ibada, Bidil Ifada. Be kaki ada, lil oliyai. Be zil ibada, be zil ifada. Be kaki ada, lil oliyai. Shafatiha. Auzu billahi min shaitanir rajim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi wa huwa al-'alim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-rahman ar-rahim maliki yawmiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. Ihdina siratal mustaqim. Sira talatina nam talihim, Gadil Matu be alayhim, Walla Dolin, Allahumma Salila Sayyidina Muhammad, Al Fatihi Lima Uglika, Walkatimi Lima Sabaka, Nasir al Haki Bil Haki Walhadi, Lasratika al Mustakim. Wala alihi haqqadrihi wa miqdarihi al-adheem. We ask Allah, Jalal Jalalahu, by the blessings of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the barakah of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba and Sheikh Ibn Rafal to open our hearts to the possibility of a new reality of life as disciples of the great master Sheikh Ahmad Bamba Barke Sheikh Ibrahim, 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 Barke Sheikh Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We want to welcome, welcome all of you to our orientation class for new disciples on the path. We are incredibly thankful and blessed to introduce you to a new reality, a new paradigm, and a pathway that is ancient, a pathway that is blessed and a pathway that your soul was looking for ever since you came to the planet Earth. I must say it is an honor and a blessing to introduce to you two of the greatest luminaries that the world has ever known. As uh, a sister who came to visit a couple of weeks ago or last week, we were talking about Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. She was born Muslim, grew up in Islam. And she said, I feel like I've been robbed. Like I'm just now finding about Sheikh Ahmed Bamba after all of this time in Islam. And the reason being is because our system comes from West Africa. 
Our system is an African Islamic system. And because the founders of our way are of African descent, it's not well known in the Arab world and it's not really well known here in the West. So we are here to present to you the path of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, Muridullah, and the path of Sheikh Ibrahim, the Bifal path. We have a lot to cover in four weeks, inshallah. Now, these beings, and we call them beings because we have been traveling on this path since 1996. We've been with the Sheikh for many lifetimes, but since 1996 in this life, we've been with the Sheikh about 26 years. And I'll be the first to tell you, I still am discovering who these beings are. The being dressed in all white is who we call Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. You might wanna write this down. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba has three names that we know him by. He is known as Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. He is also known as Serene Tuba. Serene is, an, is a Wolof word that means spiritual guide. And Tuba is a word that means blessed in Arabic, but Tuba is also a holy city that was founded by Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. So he's called Serene Tuba because he's the spiritual guide from Tuba, a city that he founded. So we have Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. We have Serene Tuba. Actually, he has four names because in one Kasai, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba says, I am Abdullah. He referred to himself as Abdullah, the servant of Allah. Wakadim Rasul. Kadim Rasul is his most beloved name. Kadim Rasul means the worker for the Prophet Muhammad. Kadim means servant or the one who does kidma. Kadim comes from the word kidma. Kidma means to serve the Lord, to serve Allah, to do service. Rasul, of course, is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet Muhammad alayhi salam. So Sheikh Abdul Muhammad says in one kasaid, one of his writings, I am Abdullah, the servant of Allah, while Kadim Rasul, and the servant of the Rasul, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. This name, Kadim Rasul, is very, very, very important. K H A D I M R A S O U L or R A S O O L Rasul, the Prophet, the Messenger. Uh, I was taught by the masters in West Africa. Specifically, I learned the hadith from our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah Farmi. Sheikh Abdullah Farmi said that the Prophet Muhammad has said in a rare hadith that you don't see, the Prophet Muhammad said that my highest worker in my community would be my Kadim. This is a hadith I received from Sheikh Abdul Farmi. The Prophet Muhammad Islam said, the highest servant in my community would be my Kadim. So this hadith was known by many, many, many Sufis in West Africa, my Sheikh told me. Many masters many Somebody put something in the chat. I think I need to read that. Hold on. So 
Many, many masters in West Africa knew this hadith of the Qadim. My Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah Farmi told me, many Sufis got to a high station and they sought to be this Qadim of the Prophet, the worker for the Prophet, because they knew this saying. A lot of masters went into the forest, went into jungles, they went into austerities, they went into extended fasts, they went into extended retreats to try to reach this station of Qadim, Qadim Rasul. Sheikh Farmi even told me that some masters died in the pursuit of this station that they knew about in the hadiths in West Africa. Some saints and masters went through such arduous tests and trials that some of them even died, Sheikh Farmi told me, trying to get the station of Qadim Rasul. In Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's quest for this station that he knew about from the hadiths, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba went into a retreat in a place called Dar al Qudus in Tuba. I've been there. You can go visit the place where he did his retreat. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba went into a room, a small room, with the intention of reaching the station of Qadim Rasul. When he entered his retreat, he did not know how long he was going to be in the retreat. There was a mosque, and the mosque is still there. I went to the mosque. I went to the room where he did his retreat. Uh, the, the, the mosque is in Dar al Qudus in Tuba. He went into his retreat for five years. Nobody knew he, when he was going to come out of his retreat. He would only come out of the room to lead the five prayers in the mosque. For five years, he stayed in one room, did his prayers and fasting and zikr and Quran. He would come out and lead the morning prayer, go back in the room. He'd come out and lead the zur, the afternoon prayer, go back in the room. He'd come out for asr, the third prayer, go back in the room. He would come out for the maghrib to, to lead the prayer in the mosque and go back in the room. He will come out for the fifth prayer of Isha and go back in the retreat room called Kalwa. In Sufism, a retreat is called a Kalwa. Most Sufi masters do a retreat for 40 days. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's retreat ended up being five years. He did that for five years in the room praying, only coming out to lead the prayers. And during his fifth year's retreat, Something miraculous happened. When he went to lead the Salat in the mosque, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali came into the mosque and talked to Sheikh Ahmed Bamba in front of people, eyewitness accounts. And I know some of you are saying, how is that possible for the Prophet Muhammad salam, to appear in the waking state and not in the dream state? Well, the Prophet Muhammad has said in the Hadith, peace and blessings be upon him, the Prophet Muhammad says in the Hadith, anyone who says they have seen me in a dream has seen me in a dream because the shaitan cannot take my form. And the Prophet Muhammad said, anyone who has seen me in a dream will soon see me while they are awake. So in the Sufi world, there are many masters who were visited by the Prophet Muhammad Islam while they were awake. To name a few, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani was visited by the Prophet Muhammad while he was awake. Sheikh Abu Hassan Shadli was visited by the Prophet Muhammad while he was awake. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed Tijani was visited by the Prophet Muhammad while he was awake. And for sure, St. Rabia, the most famous woman saint that we know, St. Rabia, was visited by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all the saints and the Prophet, while she was awake. So when the Prophet Muhammad, 
and the four Sahabas, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, came to visit Sheikh Ahmed Obama in the mosque in Dar al Qadus. You can go visit the mosque, it's still there. The Prophet Muhammad Salam, and Sheikh Ahmed Obama had a conversation. I'll summarize the conversation. The Prophet Muhammad Salam, told Sheikh Ahmed Obama, the station that you are seeking, the station of the Qadim, you will not be able to get that station by praying and doing a retreat. The Prophet Muhammad Salam, told Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, if you want to get this station of Qadim that you are seeking, you will have to leave this holy city of Tuba and go through tests and trials, be tested by Allah to get to that station. And the answer Sheikh Ahmed Bamba gave was this. He said, oh, Prophet Muhammad Salam." Because of my love for you, I am able to sustain any test and trial to become your Kadim, your servant. It was at this point that Sheikh Ahmed Bamba left the holy city of Tuba and he went to meet the French army. This is unbelievable story. The French had colonized Senegal and French was a, Senegal was a colony of the French government. The French army was exiling any leader of Islam in West Africa that seemed to have a power and a following to prevent jihad against the colonialists. And the French had been calling Sheikh Abu Bamba, writing him letters to come to court in a city named St. Louis to put him on trial for teaching Islam. Can you imagine that? Sheikh Ahmed Obama ignored all of the summonses to come to court. So when the Prophet Muhammad Salam told him he had to leave the holy city of Tuba to go through tests and trials, he left the holy city of Tuba to go to meet the French army to go to, to court in St. Louis and the French thought he was answering their summons. They didn't know about the divine intervention of the Prophet Muhammad Salam, telling him to leave, leave the city. So the French thought he was coming to be a captive and a prisoner and to go to court because of their summons. When he went to uh, court in St. Louis, as soon as he entered the courtroom, he asked Sheikh Ibn Fall to wash the floor with water. He put down a prayer rug and made two rakats of prayer in the courtroom. I'll sort in the story because we have to get to Sheikh Ibn Fall's story. When Sheikh Ahmed Obama was found to be unsubmissive to the French court, they decided to exile him to Gabon. And what is amazing is that the French had exiled many West African sheikhs, imams, and Muslim leaders to Gabon. And when they exiled them to Gabon, they assassinated them and killed them. And none of them ever came back from Gabon alive. When they took Sheikh Ahmed Bamba to the port in the car to put him on the ship to exile him, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba was walking on the plank to go to the ship to go into exile. He turned around to the crowd of people that had gathered. He told the crowd, put your hands up, I will pray for you. And he said, I am Kadim Rasul. I will be back. I don't know if you hear what I just said. The French exiled many people to Gabon and killed all of them. They never came back. When Sheikh Ahmed Obama was boarding the boat, he turned around to the crowd who had gathered and said, 
put your hands up, I'm going to pray for you. And he made the announcement, I am Kadim Rasul. I am the Kadim, and I will be back. This was an amazing speech for the French because the French reported that every other leader that they exiled at the same moment while boarding the boat, the French reported that every other sheikh that they exiled turned to the crowd and said, please pray for me so that I can come back. Pray for me so that I can come back from this exile. With Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, the same instant was different because he turned around, prayed for the people, said that I will be back, I am Kadim Rasul. Okay, this is an introduction to Sheikh Abu Bamba. Now, the Sheikh who is on the right, who we know to be Sheikh Ibn Afal, Sheikh Ibn Afal. Let me take a look through this room and see who's in here really quick. All right, so. Sheikh Ibn Afal was the companion of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. He was the highest master made by Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. He was gifted when he came to Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. Sheikh Ibn Afal was an Islamic scholar, a fiqh, a kida, Tawheed, Sheikh Ibn Afal was a Hafiz of Quran. He had the whole Quran memorized. Sheikh Ibn Afal was a prince of a kingdom. His father was the king. Sheikh Ibn Afal was a prince who was going to inherit a kingdom. Sheikh Ibn Afal had a vision where Allah told him Go and seek this master, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. He will bring you directly to me. When Sheikh Ibn Afal left his family to go and seek for a spiritual guide, his family thought he was crazy. They were saying things like, Sheikh Ibn Afal, you are the prince to inherit this kingdom. How is it that you say you had a dream and a vision and you have to leave this kingdom and go in search of a spiritual guide. You are already a Hafiz of Quran. You already know all of the Islamic doctrines. How is it that you feel you have to leave this area and go in search of a spiritual guide? What they did not know is that Sheikh Ahmed Ubamba, listen to what I'm telling you. You will not find this in any books. This is not written, this is oral history. The Sufi path is really from mouth to ear. It's not written in books, although we try our best to put the words on pages, but the true way is not in a book. It comes from a Sheikh to a disciple directly. You will not see this written anywhere. Sheikh Ahmed Ubamba said, in one of his oral statements, he said, I worshiped Allah for 70,000 years before Adam was created in clay. I don't know if you heard what I just said. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, I worshiped Allah for 70,000 years before the creation of Adam. When they asked Sheikh Ahmed Bamba about his lineage, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, I am not from the children of Adam. I am not from Bani Adama. I am not from the children of Adam. According to the elders and the sheikhs and the masters of our path, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and Sheikh Ibn Fall were together in the world of souls 
70,000 years before Adam, and they had an agreement before the creation of the world. I know y'all like, what have I got myself into? I ain't never heard no ish like this. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and Sheikh Ibrahim Fall were together 70,000 years in the world of souls before Allah created a sun, a moon, a star, a planet Earth. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba told Sheikh Ibrahim Fall in this world of souls, he said, you and I will go to Earth and work for Islam. In the future, Islam will be falling down and Allah will send you and me to earth close to the end of time to work for Allah and the Prophet Muhammad to bring Islam back up. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, when we go on earth, my name will be Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. You have to come and find me to establish this kidma, this work for Islam. And I'm shortening the story. So when Sheikh Ibn Afal had that dream and vision where Allah told him to go and find Sheikh Ahmed Ubamba, this is when he had a recall, a total recall inside of himself. And he knew his mission on earth was to go and find the master, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, and they were to work together to bring back Islam to its highest point. And that's exactly what happened. It took Sheikh Ahmed, it took Sheikh Ibn Fall a couple of years to find Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. But when he found Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, it was on the 20th day of Ramadan. Nyar Fuki Funchi Wear the Core is what we say in Wolof. It was on the 20th day of Ramadan that Sheikh Ibn Fall took his bayat, his initiation, to be with Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. Sheikh Ibn Fall was in service of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba for three years. He worked for Sheikh Ahmed Bamba for three years. And Sheikh Ahmed Bamba gave him the station of Sheikh. It only took Sheikh Ibn Fall three years to be made a Sheikh. And Sheikh Ahmed Bamba told Sheikh Ibn Fall, You are a Sheikh now. Go and establish the way of the by fall. The by fall path is an inner path inside of the murid path. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's path is called Muridullah, the pathway of Sharia, Tariqat, Hakikat, Marifat, Fiqh, Akita, and Tasawuf is all inside of the Murid path of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, which we call Muridullah. The path inside of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's way is from Sheikh Ibn Fall. And this path is called the Bifall, B-A-Y-E-F-A-L-L. -L. Bifall means the way of Sheikh Ibn Fall. Sheikh Ibn Fall's way was based on and is based on work, 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 and zikr, 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 zikr. The way of the bifall is based on serving the master, the sheikh, serving Islam, and the zikr of la ilaha illallah. The bifall say la ilaha illallah is the beginning of the path, and la ilaha illallah is the end of the path. So this is how we get the way of the murid, known as muridullah. And the way of the bifall that came from Sheikh Ibn Fall. Now, what's amazing, Sheikh Ibn Fall said, I came to earth with 13 different ways to reach Allah. 
I don't know if you hear me though. Take even a false said, I came to earth with 13 pathways. He said, I taught the way of the bifall. It was so powerful, I couldn't even teach the other ways. The people would not have been able to understand it. So here we have the Murad path and the bifall path, which is really one path. The bifall served the murids, and the murids are supported by the bif. Without the bifall, the murid path would not be standing. Is what I want to say. Sheikh Ibrahim was the servant of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, and Sheikh Ahmed Bamba was the servant Kadim Rasul of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to the extent that. When they asked Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, who is the founder of your path? Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, My pathway was founded by Iman and Islam and made perfect by Islam. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, The founders of my way are Iman and Islam. And he said, My pathway was made perfect by Islam. When they asked Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, when did your pathway start? Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, my way started. Listen to this, y'all ain't gonna believe this. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, my way started when the Prophet Muhammad Salam, and Abu Bakr were in the cave between Mecca and Medina. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, my way started when the Prophet Muhammad was making hijra from Mecca. They were going to Medina. It was Prophet Muhammad Salam, and Abu Bakr. They hid inside of a cave to be to escape from those who were tracking and looking for them. Mysterious events occurred. A spider web came. A spider came and built a web over the cave. A bird came really fast and built a bird nest on a branch outside the cave. When the people following Abu Bakr and the Prophet Muhammad saw the footsteps going to the cave, but they saw a spider wave covering the cave and a bird's nest that had not been disturbed, they said, this must be a trap. Muhammad and Abu Bakr cannot be in this cave. If they were in this cave, they would have knocked the bird nest down and they would have went through the spider web. They cannot be in this cave, so they left. Sheikh Obama said his way started when Abu Bakr and the Prophet Muhammad were in that cave. Now, we have verification of this from a great Sufi master named Sheikh Nazim. Sheikh Nazim from the Naqshbandi order in Turkey, Sheikh Nazim said that when Abu Bakr and the Prophet Muhammad Islam, were in that cave between Mecca and Medina, Sheikh Nazim, may Allah bless him, said, all Sheikh Nazim said that all of the Ketubs and saints of all of the Sufi orders, their souls were in that cave with Abu Bakr and the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam. Now I'm going to stop right here. Before we go into another subject matter, I'm going to stop right here and ask uh, a brother just called trying to join us. I'm going to see if I can invite him. Uh, copy link, invite link, because I don't see him in the class, but I think he's trying to get into the class. La 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 Muhammad Rasulullah, where is the brother? He just called me. Uh, I'm going to message him this. So while I'm messaging uh, the brother, does anybody have a question or comment? Bismillah, Sheikh. Hey, wa alaikum salam. Uh, it's funny, I posted in the chat while you were saying the same thing. Mashallah. Oh, you posted that, okay. Salam, Sheikh. All right. Uh, 
Uh, well, like, Salam, any other alaykum. questions or comments? Hold on, let me get yeah, back to my, the class. My... Yes, go ahead, beloved. I'm just, you know, after hearing all this, it just makes me want to dive in even deeper. It's it's amazing, amazing. Yeah. The story of one of these orders is not like the others. One of these Sufi masters is not like the others. This way is profoundly deep. For sure. What do you say? I'm in New York with some brothers. Okay, he's in New York. Okay, I'm teaching class. This way of Sheikh Ahmed Obama and Sheikh Ibn Fall, there's many Sufi orders. All of the Sufi masters and all of the Sufi orders are great, let me tell you. But you will not in it's OT find an order. Oh man. We have a uh, Aleem, you made it. Please mute your phone, brother Aleem. I'm glad you made it. You will not find any Sufi order or any Sufi master with the station and blessing of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and Sheikh Ibn Fall. You will not. Sheikh? Yes. If I may add just one thing um, you, you didn't mention, but I think it's important. When uh, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, when he appeared with the Sahaba to uh, Sheikh uh, Madhubamba before, uh, before he submitted to the French, there was something in that conversation that the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam told him that um, in his test and trials, he could not use violence against the French. And I think that that's, that's huge, right? Because... Um, before Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, a lot of people try to revolt against the French, and they did use violence. Yeah. A lot of there, there are some uh, Islamic sheikhs who led, who led. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Jihad. Uh, jihad against the, against, against the French. But the Prophet Muhammad told him and said, "You cannot use violence," and he succeeded. Um, so that's that's huge to succeed against the French without no violence and just prayers and and poetry. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to speak on that. Yeah, I mean, it's evident that uh, our master, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, what he's speaking of is there were some uh, there were some Sufi masters and sheikhs in West Africa who waged a physical war. They did outer jihad. They, they took up weapons and arms to fight, to fight the French colonialists in West Africa. But Sheikh Ahmed Bamba decided, I will not fight them with weapons of war. I will fight them with prayers. And this is how he was successful. He defeated the French through the power of spiritual kun fire kun, we'll say. Okay. And this sets him apart from all the others who wanted to, who actually fought back against the French. Now, even uh, when the French came to take Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, he had a lot of followers, and the followers were ready to take up arms and weapons to fight the French army. And Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, no, we will not shed blood. I will go with them and be victorious through the power of prayers, and I will come back victorious. He already knew. So, yes, that's a very important point you brought up. Oh, hey, assalamu alaikum, sir. Um, Sheikh Sufi, how you doing? Ah, wa alaikum salam, Sheikh Book. Nah, Book. Nah, Alhamdulillah, yo nak. Santi alabwa. Alhamdulillah. So, um, the topic is kind of like a topic as well as a question. As in, I just want to make sure that I'm kind of right and something like in a simple format that all my fellow scholars, all my other fellow seven, 17 scholars could, we all could be in the same page because, you know, this used to mind boggle me when I didn't know much about it either. So essentially, I just want to kind of like put this into character so all of my homies could understand and all of my um, blessed men and women. Essentially, like this Sufi vibe, it's like an explanation and just a deeper um, route of um of getting closer to god that's number one 
the yes. main bigger picture as in may i call it the main collage because nothing is higher than it it just explains like the reason for life which is hey the hereafter you over here just want a blessed spot in heaven settled now number two is the sense of the matter that life even though when you actually coming to do the the route of life you trying to good, do these good deeds you're trying to structure yourself into greatness and being good the best you can and reaching spiritual spiritual perfection and things of that nature i one thing that i kind of you could even elaborate on it is that there's this route to kind of find yourself right now what I wanted to like know, like this finding yourself thing, right? Um, you know, when you come to actually find yourself, like who you there's even a dua for it. Um, excuse me, um, I forgot it, but this route that this this thing that you say when you even see yourself um in water or when you see yourself in a mirror, as in because water is kind of like a mirror, because you when you look down at water, you only see a reflection of yourself. Now when you come to find your, not find yourself really, but when you're on this route to finding yourself and things like that, like, how do you kind of, um, how do you know that you have like reached it? And by the time you reach that finding yourself thing, is that mean that not that your life is over or like, what does that kind of mean? Like finding, okay. like finding yourself, please, because I know it, that it, this it, is mainly it. Yeah, like Sufi wise. The good thing is, you have asked someone who has found their self. Okay, flexed, okay. And knows what it means to find yourself. Okay. When people say I'm looking for myself, they have a vague idea of what they're looking for. True. But until you experience finding yourself, the only way to know what finding yourself is, is to actually find yourself. And oh. once you find yourself, this is when you will know what it is. Now, the Sufi proverb says, I set out on a journey to yeah. find God, and I found myself, and I felt I set out on a journey to find myself, and I found God. Meaning okay. that the self and Allah are synonymous. Okay. Okay. Now, let me give you my own experience of this. Please. The self that you are looking for is not the physical body. Yeah. The self that you are looking for is actually your soul. Oh. Okay. What we call the nafs. Nafs. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. You know, yeah. Now. Okay. Once you get in touch with your nafs, I, I hope everybody's listening to this. Once you get in touch with your nafs and you start to purify, the only way you will reach Allah is through the soul becoming purified. This whole Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, this whole Sheikh Ibn Fall, this whole path that we are on is Taskil to Nash. That's all it is. This whole thing is about purifying your soul so that your soul can return to Allah. How does this happen? Before death. Okay, returning Be to before Allah. You before you die. Death. Okay. Your soul, Nash, must reunite with your root, your spirit. You have three selves. You have the people in the class, please write this down. You have three bodies. You have actually five bodies, but we're not going to go into all five bodies. We're just going to go into the three main bodies. You have three bodies. You have the physical body. In Arabic, it's called the jism. My brother Kanye West said it is. Oh, can you turn off your mic? We don't want to hear about that in this class, please. Mute your mics. You have the physical body, the, the jism. You have a soul body called Nash. And you have a spirit body called Ru. Who can tell me what are the names of these three bodies? This is very important. You said jism, nafs, and ru? Yes. Now, knowing yourself 
has nothing to do with the jism, the physical body. It don't matter if you black, white, yellow, brown, that part does not matter. What matters is your soul being purified. And there's seven levels of the soul. Once you purify your soul, your soul will have to return to oneness with the root, the spirit. When your soul and your root unite, then you have realization of Allah inside of your own being. I will share, depending on who's in this class, so they, iPhone, you can, you uh, can please pause. introduce yourself. Who is the iPhone? I need to know who's in the class before I say anything else. Who is the iPhone? And Shake, salam alaikum. That's that's the brother I invited to the class, my brother Glenn. Okay, welcome, welcome, brother Glenn. You are welcome. You are welcome. Yeah, so he's he been on a couple classes. He Muslim, mashallah. I humbly and, lie. Welcome, and brother Shake, Glenn. Assalamu alaikum. Shake, now, you can. Shake, if you want to pause the recording, you can do that. No, too. no, I'm not going to pause it. I'm going to just say what I have to say. So listen, in my own personal experience, a lot of this will play out for you in the world of dreams and visions. A Sufi on the path has to pay attention to what they see in their dreams and visions. Because Allah says in the Holy Quran, I will speak to them from behind a veil. And that veil is the symbols in your dreams and visions. Now, listen, my personal experience, just only about two years ago, people remember when I left Philadelphia and I went to live by myself in New Mexico. I was in New Mexico by myself for almost a year. While I was in New Mexico doing the extensive practices that I was doing, I had a vision one night and I saw myself as a little boy. I saw my soul. My soul was running in heaven. I saw myself as a little boy. I was running in heaven and that was my soul. While my soul was running, another little boy who looked just like me ran up next to him. They looked at each other. They were identical twins. That was my spirit. My nafs was one little boy. My root was another little boy. And they started talking. My spirit said to my soul, I am your spirit. You are the soul body. When you find me, we can go and talk to God. The two little boys who were my soul and my spirit ran through heaven and got into a line with a lot of little children. And there was God sitting at a table and all of the children were going to greet Allah and we shook his hand like we greet in the more path, and then I woke up. Wow. So this is a real experience. Your soul must reunite with your spirit. And from personal experience, my spirit told me, when you find me, when your nafs reunites with your ruh, you can go and see Allah meaning you can be one with Allah. Okay, wow. And we find this same teaching in ancient Kemet. In ancient Kemet, they had something called the Ba, which was the shape of a bird. And the bird was synonymous with your soul. And they had something called the Ka. The Ka was two arms stretched like this. And the Ka was synonymous with your spirit. And in the ancient Kemetic text, it says, when your Ba is united with your Ka, man and God are one. This is exactly what I experienced in my dream and my vision. Does wow. anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, yeah. I have a comment, Sheikh. 
Yes. This is also this is also a very common practice in Ifa in, in West Africa. You oh, have, please uh, share. I didn't know. Please share, brother. Yes, you have what would be your your navs would be Egbe Orum. And you would your Orum would be your spirit. And in order for you to reach God, you they have to unite. Wow. This is the yeah. exact same teaching in the Sufi world. Oh, yep, yep. Assalamu alaikum, Shay. Yeah, well, alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, beloved. Yes. If you remember, um, I don't, I don't know if you're originally from New York, but if you remember, um, back in um the '90s, um, from the teachings of the Ansar Law community, we're teaching higher sciences like that as well, because that's one of my foundations. That um, we when we used to do the what well, the sons of green light. We would see this like green light vibrating around our, around ourselves when we was doing it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So, so, so I don't know if you remember um, um, that from back in the '90s, before all the uh, all the drama jumped off with um, Imai Issa at that time. Um, I have a question as well. My question is um, that um, I have been, you know, I've been through many Tarikas, right? I've been through the Shatterly, I've been through the Tajani, I've been through the Nakshabendi, right? And it's just like Serene's two was when you read his writings, right, and not the uh, say anything bad about the rest of the Toru. It's like his writings are like one of the highest sciences that you could ever study. Because it's like when you once you read like Sandidi, Tafatu, um, Jorat Mugarakib, it's like nothing else you can pick up higher than that. Can you explain or elaborate on that? Yeah, uh I'm sorry, and bro, Abdul Hakim, assalamu alaikum, brother. Because I I I've, I've literally right. sat in the same way you felt because me. What not what attacked me because you know because Shia Ahmed Bamba he even said it straight up as in he had his um that um that guy um dad he one of his masters I forgot uh who, there was one of his masters that was from uh uh I, I forgot one of his masters dad dad that he said it was, was uh all right I'm probably sorry probably from Mauritania he probably had his yeah, master had one of those Mauritania. yeah one of those famous masters because I used to as uh, I, I forgot one of his masters Sheikh Abdul Khalid Zilani no the um the Arab one the Arab one that was I forgot his name he, he's famous too he's well known as the the Arab um Sufis I forgot the guy's name Okay. But but yeah, one thing that was kind of like in the same field that like literally is like this insane library, right? Like literally something that could be 10, 10, um, like 10 floors up or even above that, an actual whole library that was all written by one human being, you yeah. know, like what? I didn't even know that 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 many words even exist, and it's all in regards to like Allah. But I'm sorry, I just had to say that because I had that same exact feeling you had, so I, I had to throw that on scenery. Yeah. But, now, uh, brother Abdul Hakim and brother Sheikh Bo, the the difference with Sheikh Ahmed Bamba is Sheikh Ahmed Bamba first he says, "My greatest miracle is my writings." See. Sheikh Ahmed, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba was able to walk on water. He made salat on water. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba would not burn in fire. They shot bullets at Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. The bullets went through Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and killed all the people around him. They gave Sheikh Ahmed Bamba poison. He drank the poison. He didn't die. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said when he was in exile in Gabon, he said they tried to kill him 286 times. They couldn't kill him. Wow. But he said, my greatest miracle was my writings. Yeah. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, my writings came from the same place that the Holy Quran came from. This is what makes his writings different, Abdul Hakim. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, my writings came from the Loho Makfus and the Umul Kitab. They came from the hidden tablet and the mother of the books. He said, the Holy Quran is the mother of my writings, and my writings came from the same place that the Holy Quran came from. That's why when you read his Kasides, it's nothing like it on the planet Earth, nowhere, because his writings came. He didn't write the... Sheikh Ahmed Bamba was not writing poetry. Let me be the first to tell you. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba was not writing the Kasides 
Sheikh Abu Bamba was taking the Kasai's from heaven and where the Quran came from and bringing them on earth. Oh, okay. I thought Sheikh there was Abu Bamba, well. some of the rhythms. If you go on YouTube and you find the people singing Kasai's, some of those old rhythms where they sing in Kasai's came from the angels. Sheikh Abu Bamba said. I heard the angels reciting some of these prayers in heaven and I took them from there and brought them here on earth. Okay. And this is why there are some writings that Sheikh Ahmed Bamba brought to earth. Do you know there's some writings that Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, when he finished writing it, he would give it to a disciple and say, take this and bury it. It's not for human eyes to see. There's plenty of writings of Sheikh Abdul Bamba buried in Tuba because when he was writing them, when he finished, these writings were for angels or for jinns. They were not for human being eyes to see. He told the disciples to take this and bury it. We know for a fact there is a writing called Mukadi Matu Amda the introduction to praise. It's a powerful salawat prayer on the Prophet Muhammad Islam, Kasai called Mukadimah to Amda. When Sheikh Abdul Mama finished writing Mukadimah to Amda, he gave it to a disciple and told him, take this and bury it. This is not for human beings to see. This time, when the disciple was taking it to bury it, he opened the writing and started reading it. It was so beautiful, he came back to Sheikh Abu Obama and said, Sheikh, no, no, we can't bury this. We cannot bury this one. We need this one. We cannot bury this. Sheikh Abu Obama told the disciple, if you can memorize this writing, before sunset, we will keep it and give it to the human beings. The disciples sat down, started memorizing, 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 memorizing. By the time the sunset, he had not memorized the whole writing. It's kind of long. You can find it on YouTube. But because of his intention to memorize it, Sheikh Ahmed Obama told the disciple, because of your intention to memorize Mukadi Matu Amda, we will keep this writing and give it to the disciples, okay? Now, our way of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, he said the way was founded by Iman, Islam, and Isan. And I think, uh, Brother Akil, you have your hand raised, you wanna ask a question? Peace and love. Uh, family, uh, the I was my prophet. Um, no, I wasn't raising my hand. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was explaining myself I was, because of those um, four um, ways out of prophet Imam Isa and Isa or three. This one. Okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now, we published a book called uh, Murid's, uh, what's it called? Uh, Murid Sadiq, Path of the, we published a book called Path of the Murid Sadiq. I sent the PDF out several times. We posted that PDF in the chat. All disciples should read and study this book, Path of the Murid Sadiq. Because the, the, the book has four sections. The first section of the book is on Iman, Islam, and Isan. Remember Sheikh Ahmed Obama said, our way is founded by Iman and Islam and made perfect by Isan. If you see our school symbol, uh, who is it? If, can everybody see? Look at the super school, scroll, scroll through and look for someone who's who signed up as Sufi School. 
Can you see that symbol? It's a round circle. It says Sheikh Ahmed International Sufi School. And on it, it says Iman, Islam, and Isan. Can you see that? I hope you all can see that. Uh, well, like Salam, that's uh, Mustafa Fall. Does everybody see that? Someone who's logged in under the Sufi school, you see that symbol? That is the logo for our school. Our school is based off of Iman, Islam, and Isan. So as an introductory class, I want to just give you a review of some of the basics. Islam is for the physical body. Islam is based off of the five pillars. You could write in your mind, Islam is based on five and Iman is based on six. Write that down, you'd be a Muslim scholar. Iman, Islam, Islam is based on five. And Iman is based on six. Iman, Islam, Islam, Islam is based off of the five pillars. Ashadu and la 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 is based on the Shahada. It's based on the five prayers, fasting and rock, the five prayers, the Salat. Islam is based off of Ramadan, the fasting. Islam is based off of Zakat, giving charity. And Islam is based off of Hajj, making the five, making the Hajj, the pilgrimage. These are the five pillars of Islam. Iman is based on six, six articles of faith. We believe in Allah. We believe in all of the prophets. We believe in all of the angels. We believe in all of the holy books in their original form. We believe in the, the, the divine decree. Everything is written by Allah, the, the color of Allah. And we believe in the day of judgment and the resurrection. These are the six articles of faith. If you have that book, Path of the Murad Sadiq, the first section is on Iman, Islam, and Hassan, and I did not write that section. The first section is translations of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's writings on Iman, Islam, and Isan that I was taught by Sheikh Abdullah Farmi. Sheikh Abdullah Farmi sat with me with writings from Sheikh Ahmed Bamba in Arabic on Iman, Islam, and Isan. He took the writings on Islam and said, write this from Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. He took the writings on Iman and said, write this from Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. He took the writings on Isan from Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and said, write this. So the whole first section of the book is not mine. It's translations of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba's writings on Iman, Islam, and Isan. That's why it's so important that you read that book. Now, Islam is based on the five pillars. Iman is based on the six articles of faith. And Isan is based off of Tasawuf. Isan, the, the, the textbook definition, when the angel Jabril, peace be upon him, asked the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam, what is Isan? For those of you who are in the Hadith class, the first, the first hadith I always teach is the hadith of Jibril. We covered the whole hadith in class, but today I'm just covering the part on Isan. When the Prophet Muhammad Islam, was asked by the angel Jibril, what is Isan? The Prophet Muhammad Islam, said, Isan is to worship Allah as if you see Allah and to know that if you don't see Allah, Allah sees you. So Isan is to be conscious of Allah at all times. And what Isan will do, if you are conscious of Allah, Isan will perfect your character. So Isan 
is to worship Allah. As if you see Allah, and know that if you don't see Allah, Allah sees you. Is to be conscious of Allah at all times in your thoughts, words, and actions and behaviors. But when you're conscious of Allah, it gives you good character. So we can say, Isan is the perfection of your adab. Isan is the perfection of good character. That's why the Prophet Muhammad Islam says, I came to perfect the character of mankind. So the Sufi way is perfecting your character. The Sufi way is purifying your soul so that it can merge back with your, your spirit so that you can be one with Allah. The oneness with Allah is not a physical thing. The oneness with Allah is wusul. Wusul is an Arabic word. The oneness with Allah is the wusul of your nas and your ruh. But that only happens if you purify your soul through the seven levels of the soul. Does anybody have a question? Yeah, um, I'm sorry, because I really, I really was just deeply like into those nafs because of those seven um those seven levels and that basically was like my main motivation to everything just reaching that final nafs but i didn't know that there's literally even a step after those nafs which was those other three to five things that you spoke of so after reaching those fulfilling those seven nafs there's like other steps or something like that no 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 the seven levels of the soul is the completion of it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Once you get to the seventh level. So what I want to do in today's class, uh, this is the book, Sheikh Ahmed Obama, Path of the Morris Sadiq. It's been posted in the chat seven times, I mean, several times. But today we're going to go over the seven levels of the soul. And we'll close the class with that. And uh, next week, we will go over uh, um, now. Oh, let me stop right here. Can everybody see this slide? Yeah. Take a <laughs> screenshot of this. This is our pathway in summary. The pillars of Moradism is Iman by Tahi, faith in the oneness of Allah. Islam by fiqh, following the recommendations of the sharia, and Islam by tasawuf, perfection through initiation. Okay. This is in the book translated from Sheikh Ahmed Obama by Sheikh Farmi. You need to okay. know our way is Iman, which is based on Tawhi, the, the Articles of Faith. Islam is based on fiqh, following the recommendations of the sharia. How do I make my five salat? How do I fast in Ramadan? How do I make a gusu, a wudu, the basics? And then Isan by Tasawuf. Tasawuf is an Arabic word that we translate as Sufism, but perfection through initiation or taking the bayat and working on the seven layers of the soul. Did everybody copy those that, that, that down or take a screenshot of it? Um, that doc you were just speaking of that um, my good sir had just even showed the book having it. Um, is there, you have a copy of it or something like that or the PDF or something? Or where Yeah, we're work? looking at the PDF right now and I posted in the chat group several times. I, I will post it in the group again after class, inshallah. Okay, or I'll ask for it later because I'm about to hit the um, masjid for um, Zul right now. So, yeah, thank you very much, though. And I mean, I mean, scholars, I mean. you have a blessed day. All right, assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, gentlemen, and ladies. Jeff. I hope all goes well, well for all of you. All right, thank you. Did it, Jeff? Did it, Jeff? All right, salam. All right, let me get to the seven levels of the soul. It's uh, okay. Please, this is a book that you should study. We've taught classes on this. We've taught classes on Iman, Islam, and Islam. Uh, today, we're looking for the seven levels of the soul. Now, the whole Sufi way is Tasqil to Nafs. 
purification of the soul. Uh huh. All right, we're getting there. We should be getting there. Bismillah, my name. Bismillah, my name. Invisible sword. That's a poem. Ah, wow. All right. Next week we'll go over the seven levels of the. I want to do that. I want to do this next. All right, make up your mind, Shake. Do we do eight principles of a? Mm, Okay, we'll follow the order of the book. So this week we will go over the eight principles of a what it, this is a new disciples class. So every disciple should know what you need to do to be a true disciple of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. The book has four sections. One of the sections of the book is Eight Principles of a Morid Sadiq. Now, let me explain this. All of the disciples are called Murid, M-U-R-I-D. Uh, a Murid is a disciple. We should have watched the video. Uh, we have a wonderful video that just came out about two weeks ago explaining the word Murid, Muridism, Muridullah. I hope all of you got a chance to see that video. But a murid is one who has the willpower to reach Allah. A murid is a disciple, okay? In our order, you have the murid who is a disciple, and then you have something called a murid sadiq. This word is very important. After you take bayat and initiation, you are a murid. But in order to become a true disciple, you have to have these eight qualities. Once you are a true disciple, you are a murid sadiq. And the word sadiq comes from Abu Bakr sadiq, the truthful. So uh, what you see before you on the screen is a writing. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba wrote a writing called Murid Sadiq. And in his writing, Murid Sadiq, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba gave eight principles eight qualities that every disciple must have in order to be a true disciple, okay? So we're gonna go over these eight principles uh, today and we will save the seven uh, stations of the soul for next week, okay? Uh, now, this is my introduction. So Sheikh Ahmed Obama gave the eight principles and I wrote an essay, I wrote explaining what this, each principle is. So the first principle is love for the shaykh. The first principle of the Mura Sadiq is love for the shaykh. Sheikh Abu Dubamba said that the disciple must have love for the shaykh. Sheikh Ibra Fall is the highest example of this principle. Once, okay, so now I'm gonna stop right here. I want you to read the book but I will just give the teachings today. All disciples must have love for the Sheikh. Love for Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, love for Sheikh Ibn Fall. When you have love for the Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, if a disciple has the first quality, the first principle of love for the Sheikh is so important, Sheikh Ahmed Obama said, if a disciple has love for the Sheikh, the other seven qualities will come to them naturally. And uh, Brother Akil is talking about Fanafi Sheikh. We should talk about now. Let's take a, a, a we're going to, so the first principle is love for the Sheikh. But since Brother Akil brought it up, if you're taking notes, there's three stations of what we call fana. You might want to write this down. Fana, F-A-N-A. Fana means to die or death or to become extinct. There's three stations of fana. The Prophet Muhammad Islam, says, die before you die. Fana means death. 
The three stations of Fana are in Arabic Fana fi Sheikh. Fana fi Sheikh to die in the Sheikh. Fana fi Rasul to die in the Prophet Muhammad, salam, and Fana fi Allah to die in Allah. Now, I'm not going to explain all three today. If someone can remind me, take a note of it. The Sheikhs, next week, when we're going over the seven stations of the soul, before we go over the seven stations of the soul, I want to explain in detail what does it mean to have Fanafi Sheikh? How do we achieve Fanafi Sheikh? How do we achieve Fanafi Rasul? And how do we achieve Fanafi Allah? And you know what? Uh, hold on one second. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Flavor vision ain't blurry. Don't worry. Uh, we have La uh, ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Uh, brother, I'm a uh, la 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 Muhammad Rasulullah. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna share the document right now because the brother asked for it. I think it's better if I share it now. That way, I don't forget. Um, that way, if you want to, okay, yeah. This is the document we're reading from. This is your manual. I a lot of people don't know. But I have written, uh, what did I write? I, I have 11 or 12 books on Amazon. This is one of them. This is the best book for all disciples. And it is on Sheikh Ahmed Obama's writing. Now, where are we at? Let's, let's, um, let's try to get through this. Eight disciples of Murad Sadiq. First, this principle is you must have love for the Sheikh. Hold on to the rope of Allah. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Hold on to the rope of Allah. In the Sufi world, we see that the rope of Allah is the Sheikh because the Sheikh is connecting you to the Prophet Muhammad and his Sunnah. Okay? So some people say the rope of Allah, when Allah says in the Holy Quran, hold on to the rope of Allah. Some say the rope of Allah is the Holy Quran. Some say the rope of Allah is the Sunnah of the Prophet. And some say the rope of Allah is the sheikh because the sheikh should be living his or her life based off Quran and the sheikh should be walking in the sunnah, the way of Islam that the Prophet Muhammad was practicing, okay? So principle number one, love of the sheikh. Principle number two, the second principle is Companions of the same aim. We must be in a dara. Dara is a dara means school. One of dara means the gathering of disciples. Like what we have right now is a dara gathering. Dara is a Wolof word that means school. The dara is a place for learning and service. Sheikh Ahmed Obama says that after you have love for the Sheikh, the second principle is you must be with people who are seeking the same thing you are seeking. Birds of a feather smoke weed together. If you don't smoke weed, don't go around people smoking weed. Companions of the same aim. If you are around people making salat, that will influence you to make salat. If you are around people who are doing a thousand zikrs a day, that will influence you to do a thousand zikrs a day. If you are around people studying Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, that will influence you to study Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. We Sufis have a proverb. Write this proverb down. The second principle can be summarized in the Sufi proverb, which says, grapes grow ripe on the vine together. Grapes grow ripe on the vine together is a Sufi proverb, meaning we are all connected to the sheikh like grapes on a vine. If a grape falls off of the vine, the, the grape does not ripen. Grapes on a vine grow ripe together. 
we must stay together as a community to practice and study this teaching. So Sheikh Ahmed Obama says, oh, also Ibn Arabi, the great master, uh, next, next month, we have an eight night intensive on Ibn Arabi. Ibn Arabi has a writing called the book of the murid, what the seeker needs. Uh, we're going to have an eight night intensive. I will be teaching for eight nights straight to cover his entire book. The class is based on a $99 donation to be in that class. We will cover Ibn Arabi's book, What the Seeker Needs. But Ibn Arabi says, when you're on this pathway, you must find a true friend to walk with. And Ibn Arabi says, finding a true friend is rare. Now, if he said that over a thousand years, if Ibn Arabi said finding a true friend is rare back then, what about finding a true friend in 2022 is rare if you can find one sister who got your back or you can find one brother who's really down with you. That's rare. So Ibn Arabi says, when we walk on this path, we must find a friend with the same aim and walk on this path with that person, all right? Second principle, companions of the same aim. Third principle, yakin be kalbi. You must have, certainty in Arabic is yakin. There are three stations of yakin. Ilmu yakin, anal yakin, and hako yakin. Next week, I need to go over the three stations of fana. And we need to go over the three stations of Yaqeen, the knowledge of certainty, the sight of certainty, and the truth of certainty. But for today's class, the third principle is Yaqeen be Kalbi and Arabic, certainty of heart. In the Sufi world, we say, if you doubt, you're out. You must be certain that you have found the true teacher who can guide you. You must be certain in the living shaykh that the shaykh has what you need to reach Allah. You must be certain in the doctrines of Islam, no doubt about Islam. You must be certain that the Prophet Muhammad Islam, is the last prophet. You must have yakin in these teachings in your heart and never doubt. One of the greatest things that Shaitan, let me tell all the new disciples this, you need to know, now that you have taken your bayah and you are disciples of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, the greatest task of the Shaitan, the devil right now, may Allah protect us from him, the greatest thing the devil wants to do right now is separate you from Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. He wants to separate you from Sheikh Sufi in these classes. Because I only be lying when they Sheikh Tana Rajim, he knows that if you keep studying Sheikh Ahmed Bamba and you keep coming to these classes, you keep doing the daily practices, you gonna be whooping Satan's ass. And he don't want that. He don't want that. He don't want you to get this science because if you get this science, you can defeat him, you can defeat the Nafs, you can defeat the Dunya, you'll be able to defeat the four enemies. So you must be certain in your heart that you are on the right path and you have found the right master, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. The fourth principle is True guidance, Idaya, Yahadi. You must have true guidance to reach Allah. To be a true disciple, you must have true guidance, meaning you must have a sheikh who has the knowledge of Iman, Islam, and Islam. You must have a sheikh who is teaching you, not just a sheikh that you send in donations from. I'm, I'm tired of some of these more shakes. People sending them money, they ain't giving them one damn practice. Shake. Yes. That's that's what happened with me. I had took a bill with 
Shake, you know who I'm talking about, right? He just yeah, give you a sticker. Child, don't say their name. Don't say their name. They just give you a sticker and pat you on the back and say, uh, uh, go on your way and send Hadia. That's it. I'm, I don't want to talk about myself. I don't want to say anything about myself. But a day will come when all the people in the West will have to come to Sheikh Sufi to get the teachings of Sheikh Ahmubama that they need. I have not seen nobody in the West doing what I'm doing, damn it. And I don't want to talk about myself because I, it could be an ego thing. But it, I tell you what, if you find somebody in North America doing what I'm doing, please introduce me to them. I want to meet them. I want to work with them. I want to help with them. I want to help them. You must have true guidance. The guidance comes from one. The number one guide for us is the Holy Quran. Holy Quran. Holy Quran. They asked Sheikh Ahmed Obama, what is it that makes you so close to Allah? When they asked Sheikh Ahmed Obama, what is it that made you so close to Allah? He said it was the Holy Quran. Our guidance is from Quran and Sunnah. The Sunnah is how did Prophet Muhammad practice Islam? Read about the Prophet Muhammad's life. In the first year class, we have a whole eight week class on Prophet Muhammad Lay Islam. It's coming up next year for the first year students. And the guidance comes from the Qasides of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. We're reading the Qasid on Sunday. We have enough of Sheikh Ahmed, I'm going to say it. We have enough of Sheikh Ahmed Obama's writings in English that we do not have to depend on any Senegalese teachers anymore. We have enough of his writings in English now. Some of these sheikhs will take your donations and won't give you no practices to purify your soul. Six years later, you with that sheikh, you in the same place. You didn't go nowhere. I would be lying in that shaitan regime. I tell people, if you take Bay out with me and you're still the same person next year, leave. Don't stay in the school. Because this Sufism is the practices are supposed to change you and perfect your soul, purify your soul, and make you a better person. You must have true guidance. One thing that we have to talk about right now is something called a deagle. N-D-I-G-U-E-L. Deagle is an, a recommendation that comes from the shape for disciples to practice. A deagle is a recommendation that comes from the shape for all disciples to practice and if you practice the deagle of the shape, it will benefit you spiritually. Right now, the main deagle we have is every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, the deagle is we ask all the disciples to recite Bismillah Rahman Rahim all day. We ask the disciples to recite Bismillah Rahman Rahim 1,000 times, 2,000 times, 10,000 times every Tuesday to protect our whole school. And we are reciting Bismillah Rahman Rahim on Tuesday as a gift to Sheikh Ibn Fall. And why on Tuesday? Sheikh Ahmed Bamba said, Allah sends the tests and trials for the week to planet Earth on Tuesday. So when you're reciting Bismillah Rahman Rahim in large amounts on Tuesday, it will protect you from the tests and trials that come to Earth on Tuesday. And this is the guidance. You must have true guidance. Principle number five, patience during trials. Woo. Patience during trials. You hear us say over and over again, Allah says in the Holy Quran, if you want to be close to me, Allah, I'm going to give you tests and trials. In the Quran, Allah mentions four er uh, Allah's in the Quran. This is I'm reading. Surely Allah is with the patient. A more Sadiq must demonstrate patience. Okay. Uh, Allah says in the Holy Quran, he will test you from four areas. Allah says the test can come from your spouse. 
The test can come from your family and children. The test can come in health and sickness. And the test can come in finances or material wealth. These are the four areas. You are going to be tested when you take this path. All of our tests will not be the same. Some people have tests from their spouse. Some people have tests from their family. Some people are tested with sickness and some people are tested with financial difficulties. You're gonna receive a test from Allah in some of these areas, but Sheikh Abdul Obama says the fifth principle is to be patient during trials. Two things come to mind. Write this down, you'll be a Sufi genius. A Sufi is patient during the times of tests and trials and thankful during the times of abundance. Two words are sabur and shakur. Sabur means patience, two attributes of Allah. Allah has 99 names. One of Allah's 99 names is Asabur, the one who is patient. Another of Allah's 99 names is Ashakur, the one who is thankful and grateful. Write this down. Someone type this in the chat. The Sufi is like a bird who travels to Allah on the two wings of Sabur and Shakur. A Sufi is like a bird that travels to Allah on the two wings of Sabur and Shakur. A Sufi must be patient during trials. Whenever you have tests and trials, Allah says in the Holy Quran, persevere over trials through patience and prayer. Allah says in the Quran, persevere through trials with patience and prayer, but a Sufi is patient during the times of tests and trials, but we must be grateful during times of abundance. Shakur. Another, 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 another fine point is when you walk toward Allah, you will go through the two stations of Kabid and Basit. You will experience stations of Kabid contraction. And you will experience stations of Basit expansion. These are the, uh, in your whole life, you need to know. Allah has two names. One is Al-Kabid, the contractor and the constrictor. And Allah's other name, Al-Basit, is the expander. In your life, you will be ruled by one of these names. You will be in a state of contraction from the name Al-Kabid ruling over you, meaning you'll be in a state of contraction. You'll be in a state of retreat. You might be in a state of not having a lot of finances. You might be in a state of staying in the house. This is Al-Kabid contraction, or you can be in a state of al-Basit, a state of expansion where everything is going good in your life, where you have wealth and prosperity and health. This is a state of al-Basit. You will be in these two states during your whole life, a state of contraction or a state of expansion. And there is a lot that we can say about these two states, okay? If someone can take notes, I would love to go more in detail into Sabur, Shakur, Basit, and Kabid. Someone write these four names down. Sabur, Shakur, Kabid, and Basit. These four names are very important as we journey. But the fifth principle is patience during trials. Okay? Uh, the sixth principle is follow the commandments. Follow the deagle. Follow the recommendations of your shape. One thing I can say about myself, I cannot ever conceive of my shape giving me a practice that I didn't do. Follow the recommendations, follow the commands that come from your shaykh. 
If the shake gives you a practice, do it. It's for your own benefit. Follow the commands of the teacher. Follow the commands also means follow the sharia. Follow the recommendations and commands of Allah in the Holy Quran. Allah says, make five salat a day. You should be making five salat a day. Allah says, fast in Ramadan. You should fast in Ramadan. Allah says, give zakat. You should give zakat. Allah says, come to my house in Mecca. You should have the intention to make the hajj. I talked to an old Sufi a long time ago. I talked to an old Sufi. And this is when I was a new beginner on the path. And I asked the Sufi uh, old elder, what is the difference between the Sunnah, between the Sunni Muslim and the Sufi Muslim? I asked him, what is the difference between a Sunni Muslim and a Sufi Muslim? He gave me the greatest answer. This was over 20 years ago. The, the Sheikh said, the only difference between the Sunni Muslim and the Sufi Muslim is that a Sufi Muslim is a Sunni Muslim with a different intention for the practices. The goal of the Sunni Muslim is to avoid hell and go to heaven. The goal of the Sufi is to return to Allah. This is a totally different paradigm and intention. So we follow the basics of Islam. We don't say, oh, I'm a Sufi, I don't have to make Salat. That's some bullshit. You got so many Sufis out here saying, I'm so high, I don't have to pray. I'm so high, I don't have to fast in Ramadan. Nigga, please, you work for UPS. You ain't, you ain't Sheikh Ibrahim Fall. You ain't Sheikh Ibrahim Fall. So I don't want to hear that. Follow the commandments and practice the basics of Islam, please. Sheikh Ahmed Obama says, before you enter into Tasawu, you must first have fiqh, akida, and tawheed. Fiqh is knowing the Islamic laws. Akita is knowing the six articles of faith. And Tawheed is the study of the oneness of Allah. Somebody type this in the chat. Sheikh Ahmed Obama says, before you study Sufism and Tasawu, you must first study fiqh, Islamic law. How do you do the basics of Islam? You must study Akita, the six articles of faith in detail. And you must study Tawheed the science of the oneness of Allah. And this is following the commandments. The seventh principle of a true disciple is stay on the path, perseverance. Stay on the path. I've been walking on this path for half of my life almost. If I'm 53, and I've been a and I've been a disciple for 26 years. That's almost half of my life I've been walking on this path. It's good to take Bay out and be a disciple today, but it's better to take the Bay out and be a disciple 10 years from now. Do you know I have given at least 1,000 shahada, probably close to 1,000 bayat. But where are all these people today? You need to put in your mind, I'm on this path. You have to be committed to this. This is not, you will not get anything out of this path if you only stay one, two, three years. You will just, if you only stay one, two, or three years, you will just begin to understand this way. It will take you probably at least five years to know what you actually got into. It'll take you five years to know what you actually got into, and it'll take you about 10 years to have some mastery of this. Now, maybe you just came because you wanted some prayer beads. Maybe you just came because you wanted to go to Africa. Maybe you just like to have some talismans and some Islamic some Islamic uh, 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 Grigri spiritual baths. 
But for those of you who are sincere in reaching Allah, you must have perseverance. Things will come to push you off of this path. I guarantee you. Just as a pig's ass is pork, things will come to make you want to stop this path, to leave Islam even. The Prophet Muhammad Islam said, holding on to Islam in the last days would be like holding on to a hot coal. It will be difficult to hold on to Islam in 2022. If it's difficult to practice Islam in 22, what do you think it's like to practice Islam to the seventh degree, which we call Tasawuf and Sufism? Perseverance, my brothers and sisters. Make your intention to be on this path the rest of your life. As they say in the world, in the streets, we in this till the wheels fall off this itch. We doing this till we purify our souls and return to Allah before we leave the body. The last principle is one of the most important principles If you must have a pure heart, purity of heart. Allah says in the Holy Quran, she and he indeed succeed who purifies it. In the Quran, success is related to purifying your heart. He indeed succeeds who purifies it. She indeed succeeds who purifies it. This is Quran. The scholars have said that it refers to your heart and it refers to your soul. The Prophet Muhammad Islam says, there's a part of the body that if it is pure, the entire body is pure. And if it's defiled, the entire body is defiled. And they asked the Prophet Salam, what is this part of the body? He said, it is the heart. The whole Sufi path is the path of the heart. The whole Sufi path is the path of the heart. When we say Taskil to Nafs, when we say purification of the soul, we're actually speaking of three things you must purify. And I'll make this the last point of the class. In order to purify your soul, purification of the soul is the goal because your nafs cannot return to your root unless it's purified. Your soul cannot return to oneness with your spirit unless the soul is purified. But purification of the soul is the third thing that must be purified. Before you can purify your soul, you must purify your heart. And before you can purify your heart, you must purify your mind. So the three stages of purification, according to Sheikh Sufi, you won't hear this nowhere else. You must purify your mind first. Because whatever is in your mind constantly will go into your heart. You keep texting that girl. You keep thinking about her. She's going to be in your heart pretty soon. You keep doing the zikr of Allah. You keep doing prayers on the Prophet Muhammad. They will be in your heart. So the first thing you must purify is your mind and your thoughts. A Muslim is one who guides, Prophet Muhammad said, a Muslim is one who guards their eyes and their ears. A Muslim is one, you must guard your eyes and guard your ears because what goes into your eyes and goes into your ears goes into your mind. And whatever is on your mind long enough will go into your heart. And whatever is in your heart will affect your soul. Because I know you got soul. If you didn't, you wouldn't be in here. James Brown, Eric B. and Rakim. So work on having a pure mind, purifying your thoughts, purifying what you're seeing, purifying what you're hearing. Start 
looking at more Islamic videos than hip hop videos. Start playing more prayer of Qasai and Quran than playing music. Sheikh Sufi don't own the television. I ain't owned the television since I was five percenter. Peace to the gods. Why would I watch television when they telling lies to my vision? I figured that out when I was five percenter. I ain't had a television since around 93. When I look like watching TV with these devils on TV telling lies, propaganda, no TV for me. Does anybody, who can tell me in your own words, what are the eight principles of a true disciple? If one person got it, that's good. Can any disciple tell me what are the eight principles of a true disciple? Um, first principle of a true disciple is um, to have love for the sheikh. Show your love by uh, following his order, following his commands. Um, to have, I don't know, I don't know them all in order. But, okay, uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. And the next one is to have a pure heart. Um, and the other few I, I got to go back over. Okay, can anybody to... help the brother out? Love the shake, pure heart. What else are some, what are the other six? Salaam alaikum. Salaam uh, alaikum. Follow the commandments. Um, from the sheikh and the sh sharia. Okay. Patience, it, it's a marathon. It, it's not a sprint. Definitely not. True guidance must have a sheikh. Um, and the number one guide is the Quran and Sunnah. Um, certainty of heart, certainty, yakin and sheikh and beliefs. Companions of the same aim. The dar is a must. Uh, Brother Ali, let me ask you this. Why do you think it's important to have campaigns of the same aim? Why is this important, my brother? Because uh, birds of a feather flock together, but in my own experience, you know, I've, I've went down the wrong path just by association. And so now, you know, I know from experience that I need good people around me to guard <laughs> my thoughts. I mean... I mean, I mean, brother said he learned from experience. I need good people around me. Yes. Let's not go back to the hadith of the prophet as well, right? About um, you on the dean of your closest friend, right? And be careful. Oh, of friend, right? That hadith is so serious, Aki. The prophet Muhammad has said in one hadith, your religion is the religion of your friends. Ha, mean. Yo, Ahi, I ain't heard that hadith in years, but that is a fact. Your religion is the religion of your friends. So watch your friends and who you're hanging around with. All right. That's why I say Dara is so important, like even for myself, right? Because I live in an area where just multiple masjids and none of the Muslims are together. So Friday night Dara is like, my time to connect with my brothers and sisters is in to connect with the sheikh because, you know, when you don't have a system, like especially trying to be be on the path of the civil wolf without a system, it's very difficult. Like you can find people who might been on the path of three and two for like one to two years, they end up falling off because they don't have a place where they can learn the path and be able to conversate with their own brothers and sisters or even have a connection with the shake, you know? And they end up falling off because they don't have like um, a system or a place where they can mingle with other believers, you know? Yeah. And it's difficult. One of my shake in Senegal, the shake said, the shake said, the only thing that I'm worried about, the only thing that makes me nervous is a disciple who doesn't come to the Dara, a disciple who doesn't come to the classes. He said, that makes me nervous. He said, because if a disciple does not come to the school or the Dara, the shaitan is like a wolf that attacks the lone sheep that's by itself. As long as you're in the community of believers, you're coming to the classes, you're in the Dara, shaitan steps back. 
But when you stop coming for the teachings, you start going off doing your own thing, the Satan attacks like a wolf that attacks a sheep that has left the pack. We had a wonderful, wonderful class. It's been two hours. Uh, next week, what's today's date? The 12th. Now, uh, next week we're going to have two classes, okay? Next week we have a Sheikha from Pakistan. She gives a lecture, she gives a lecture once a month. Next week at 11 o'clock, there will be a lecture on the secrets of Kalthar by Sheikha Noor. She's a lover of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba in Pakistan. She teaches for our order once a month. She will give a lecture from about 11, 12 to maybe one o'clock. And next week, our introduction class will not start to about 2 p.m. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, that's because uh, I want everyone to experience her teaching. Sheikh Anur is from Hazrat Inyat Khan's order, and she's a lover of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba has visited her in her dreams many times. So she reached out to me from Pakistan. Can you believe that? So uh, now she teaches in our order once a month. I want everyone in the new disciples class to be in her class next week at 11. And after she teaches, we'll have our introductory class at about 2 p.m. Any questions or comments? I think this was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful first class. Does anybody have any questions before we close? Sheikh, I, I have one last question. Um, so all of these hadiths, you know, I'm new to Islam. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm picking up everything as I go. I bought a book called The Sealed ne Nectar. Would I be able to find all these hadiths on it? Uh, the, the interesting thing is some of the, some of the hadiths, are, they're not all collected in one place. They're not all collected in one place. So you might see them. Uh, it's, it's very rare to find all the hadiths in one place. So you might, some of them might be in the sealed nectar, but some of the ones you're hearing might not be in there. But my idea is, you know, being new on the path, study and read everything you can get your hands on. Alhamdulillah. And also, I think uh, you're, uh, wow. Uh, we have, right now we're in the middle of an eight-week hadith class. Eight-week hadith class. I think we got three more classes. So, uh, inshallah, the, the hadith class is tomorrow at 11 a.m. And the class on Sheikh Ahmed Brahma's writing is tomorrow at 1 o'clock, inshallah. So, uh, we close with the Salatul Fati. Al Fatiha and Salatul Fati. All the Bilaim, the Shaitan Rajim, La Hola, La Kuwata, the Rajim. Bismillah, Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, Malik Yomidin. Iyakana Buduwa, Iyakana Sain, Idina Sirata Mustakin, Sira Talatin, Adam Talayam, Gayam, Matubi Alayam, Walla Darling. Before we close, Sister Monique, did you have any questions? We'd love to see you in this class today. Did you have any questions, Sister? Uh, no, I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for being here. The Prophet Muhammad says if you teach a man Islam, you teach a man. He said if you teach a woman Islam, you teach a nation. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatihi lima ulika wa katimi lima sabaka na sadu al-haqib al-haq wa hadi la sinatika mustaqim wa ala alihi akal qadrihi wa makdara al-adheem. The incredible Sister Asi is here. Did you have a question, Sister Asi? Salaam alaikum. No, sir. No shake. I'm just grateful to be here. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam. How is your daughter? She's okay? How is she doing? Um, Zion is, re she's, she's doing well. She recovers, she's recovering from the flu. She had the flu for about two weeks. Allahu Akbar. May Allah give her the complete healing. Okay, she all right. Jake, I have a, I have a request real quick, inshallah. Yeah, bismillah, yes. My son, um, he's going in to have his tonsils removed, um, on Monday. And I, I request dua because he has, um, he's positive for sickle cell anemia. 
And sometimes when they do a procedure like that, it can cause mass bleeding. So I'm just requesting everyone in the daughter to um, make dua for him, inshallah. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, what time is he going? We can do a Bismillah Rahman Rahim on Monday. We can ask the people to recite the Bismillah Rahman Rahim for your son when he goes into surgery. He's going in at um, two o'clock, inshallah. So please, uh, like at least an hour before he goes in, message me and then I'll message the Dara to recite the Bismillah for your son's name, inshallah. Jerry Jeff, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, I mean. Barka Shaki Rafa, Allahumma Salila, Sayyidina Muhammad al Fatihi, Lima Uli Kawaka, Tami Lima Sabaka, Nasir al Haqq al Haqq al Hadi, Nasir al Hatika al Mustaki, Wala Ali, Hiyaka Kadri, Hiwa Magdaladin. There is an incredible event on John Coltrane going on right now from Sheikh Anur's order. I'm about to log off of here and join that event on John Coltrane, inshallah. Barker shake it up all, 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 Barker shake it up all. Assalamu alaikum, beloved family of Tuba. Read the book as much as you can. Shake out the bomb path of the more sadiq. Oh, y'all, I'm better, Jeff.